Welcome to our video on the deadly cancer myths you need to stop believing. In this video, we will debunk some of the most common and dangerous misconceptions about cancer that could potentially put your health at risk. Our goal is to provide you with accurate information so you can make informed decisions regarding your well-being. Cancer is a frightening and complex disease that affects millions of people worldwide. When faced with such an overwhelming issue, it's natural for people to seek answers and understanding. However, there are many myths surrounding cancer that not only create confusion, but can also be harmful if believed. These myths often lead individuals down a path of fear or false hope, causing them unnecessary stress and anxiety in their battle against the disease. The problem lies in how these myths spread through society. Word of mouth from friends or family members who may have heard something from someone else, sensationalized news stories, or even misinformation on social media platforms. This chain reaction leads to the widespread acceptance of these deadly cancer myths as facts without proper research or verification. So why do these misconceptions continue to persist? One reason is our innate desire for simple explanations when faced with complex problems like cancer. We want easy solutions, quick fixes, and straightforward answers. But unfortunately, this isn't always possible when dealing with such a multifaceted disease. Before we proceed, please don't forget to click the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel to help us reach more people. And ring the notification bell so you can be the first to know when our latest video comes out. Lastly, if you find value in what we do, and you'd like to fuel our mission of providing trustworthy information about cancer and other diseases, consider sending us a super thanks by clicking the thanks button at the bottom of the video. Now let's take a deep dive into some of the most pervasive myths about cancer that have been spinning around like a confused ceiling fan. Myth number one, cancer is always a death sentence. Now wait a minute, let's not be so hasty. It's true that cancer is a serious illness. However, it's not always a one-way ticket to the great beyond. Advancements in medical science have made leaps and bounds in recent years. Early detection and new treatments mean that many people live long, fulfilling lives even after a cancer diagnosis. So, while cancer is no tea party, it's certainly not the grim reaper it's often made out to be. The phrase, cancer is a death sentence, is as outdated as the idea of leeches for a headache. It's a myth steeped in the fear and misunderstanding of an era gone by. As we've learned more about cancer, how it works, and how we can fight it, the landscape has drastically changed. According to the American Cancer Society, the overall cancer death rate has fallen continuously from its peak in 1991 through 2018, by a total of 31%, thanks to improvements in early detection and treatment. This decline translates to approximately 3.2 million fewer cancer deaths during this period. And let's not forget about that silver lining early detection. It's like catching a small kitchen fire before it engulfs the whole house. Many types of cancer, including breast, colorectal, skin, cervical, and lung, can be detected early through screening. A study published in Cancer in 2020 concluded that regular screenings for these cancers can lead to early detection when the disease is most treatable and can significantly increase survival rates. Moreover, advancements in treatment options have been a game changer. Chemotherapy, radiation, and surgery were once the only options. Now we have immunotherapy, targeted therapy, hormone therapy, stem cell transplant, and precision medicine. These treatments, often used in combination, have increased survival rates and improved the quality of life for cancer patients. For instance, the five-year survival rate for localized breast cancer has increased to 99%, according to the National Cancer Institute's SEER database. Similarly, for testicular cancer, the survival rate is 95%, and for thyroid cancer, it's 98%. So while cancer is indeed a formidable opponent, it's no longer the unbeatable foe it once was. With early detection, evolving treatments, and a splash of perseverance, many live long, fulfilling lives after a cancer diagnosis. Myth number two, cancer is contagious. Now let's get this straight. You cannot catch cancer like you catch a cold or the flu. 
Most cancers are caused by genetic changes that occur throughout a person's lifetime. However, there are some viruses like HPV or hepatitis B and C that can lead to cancer and can be passed from person to person. However, the idea of catching cancer as one would a cold is fundamentally flawed. Cancer is not caused by an invading pathogen like a bacteria or virus, with some exceptions which we'll get to, but rather by genetic mutations in our own cells. These mutations can cause cells to grow and divide out of control, leading to a tumor. A 2013 study in the journal Science found that about two-thirds of these mutations are due to random replication errors when cells divide, not inherited genes or environmental factors. You can't catch these genetic changes from someone else. They're specific to each person's cells. As the American Cancer Society points out, you can't catch cancer or transfer it to someone else's body. Cancer cells from one person are generally unable to live in the body of another healthy person. Now let's tackle those exceptions. Certain viruses and bacteria may increase the risk of cancer, and these infections can spread between people. The most well-known example is the human papillomavirus, HPV. Certain types of HPV are strongly linked to cervical cancer, as well as some types of oral and anal cancer. Hepatitis B and C viruses are known to increase the risk of liver cancer, and Helicobacter pylori, a bacterium that lives in the digestive tract, can cause ulcers and is associated with an increased risk of stomach cancer and lymphoma. While these infections can spread from person to person, it's the infection that's contagious, not the cancer. And importantly, not everyone who gets these infections will develop cancer. Other factors, like genetic predisposition and lifestyle choices, also play a significant role. Myth number three. Only smokers get lung cancer. You see a lung cancer diagnosis, and instantly your mind flashes to a film noir scene with a protagonist puffing on a cigarette, right? Well, time to adjust that picture. While it's true that smoking greatly increases your risk of lung cancer, it's not exclusive to the smoking club. It's like saying only sunbathers get skin cancer. It's a common misconception, but far from the truth. Non-smokers can and do get lung cancer due to other factors like exposure to radon gas, secondhand smoke, certain chemicals, and air pollution. So, even if you've never touched a cigarette, keep an eye on those lungs. According to the American Cancer Society, up to 20% of people who die from lung cancer in the United States every year have never smoked or used any other form of tobacco. This means that if lung cancer in non-smokers had its own separate category, it would rank among the top 10 fatal cancers in the United States. So, what's contributing to lung cancer in non-smokers? Grab your detective hats, folks. We're going in. Number one, radon gas. This invisible, odorless, radioactive gas is a naturally occurring product of the soil that can get trapped in houses and buildings. The EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, estimates that radon causes about 21,000 lung cancer deaths each year in the U.S., and about 2,900 of these deaths occur among people who have never smoked. Next on our list is secondhand smoke. Non-smokers who are exposed to secondhand smoke at home or at work increase their risk of developing lung cancer by 20 to 30 percent. The CDC reports that approximately 7,300 lung cancer deaths occur per year among adult non-smokers in the U.S. as a result of exposure to secondhand smoke. Third on our list is hazardous chemicals. Exposure to certain chemicals and substances used in several occupations and industries, like asbestos, uranium, and coke, an important fuel in the manufacture of iron in smelters, blast furnaces, and foundries, can also increase the risk of lung cancer in non-smokers. Last but not least is air pollution. Outdoor air pollution, and particulates from diesel exhausts in particular, have been classified as a carcinogen by the International Agency for Research on Cancer, IARC. Prolonged exposure can increase the risk of lung cancer. Now how can you keep those lungs safe? Number one test for radon. If you live in an area where radon is a problem, you can have a professional assess your home, or you can use a do-it-yourself test kit. Number two, avoid secondhand smoke. Steer clear of smoky bars and restaurants and seek out smoke-free options. Number three, stay safe at work. 
If you work in an industry where you're exposed to carcinogens, ensure that your employer is taking appropriate safety measures. Number four, check air quality and limit exposure. Pay attention to air quality forecasts in your area and try to avoid heavy traffic when possible. Remember, while smoking is a leading risk factor, lung cancer doesn't check for a membership card at the door. So to all non-smokers, keep those lungs in check and stay vigilant. Myth number four, if you don't have a family history of cancer, you're safe. So your family tree is cancer free? That's fantastic, but don't drop your guard entirely. While a family history can increase your risk, the majority of cancers actually occur in people with no family history. Environmental factors, lifestyle choices, and those pesky random genetic mutations play a significant role in causing cancer. So keep those regular checkups, even if your family history is clear. The American Cancer Society reports that about 5% to 10% of all cancers result directly from gene defects, mutations, inherited from a parent. What about the remaining 90 to 95%? They're thought to be caused by a mix of non-genetic factors, like environmental exposures and lifestyle choices, and genetic changes that happen throughout a person's lifetime. Take smoking, for instance. It's a lifestyle choice that's responsible for about 30% of all cancer deaths, making it the single biggest risk factor for cancer, according to the World Health Organization. Or take sun exposure. A fair-skinned person might have a higher risk of skin cancer than a person with a darker complexion, but spending too much time in the sun without protection can lead to skin cancer, regardless of your skin type or family history. And then there are those pesky random mutations that occur when DNA copies itself during cell division. A study in Science in 2017 estimated that 66% of the genetic mutations that become cancer are caused by these copying errors. In all, a cancer-free family history is a wonderful thing to have, but it's not a magic shield. Regular checkups and a healthy lifestyle are key ingredients in the recipe for a long, healthy life. So keep that annual appointment with your doctor and don't skimp on your fruits and veggies. Myth number five, superfoods can prevent cancer. Ah, the allure of the superfood. It sounds like something out of a comic book, doesn't it? With a single bite of this magical berry, you're shielded from all ailments. Unfortunately, the reality isn't quite so simple. While a balanced diet with plenty of fruits, vegetables, lean proteins, and whole grains can help maintain overall health, there's no single food that can completely prevent cancer. If only it were as simple as chomping on a bowl of blueberries. So by all means, enjoy your kale smoothies and antioxidant-rich berries but don't expect them to be a panacea. The term superfood is more of a marketing gimmick than a medical term. It refers to foods that are nutrient dense, packed with vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants that are good for overall health. However, the idea that any single food can act as a magic bullet against cancer is about as real as finding a golden ticket in your chocolate bar. According to the National Cancer Institute, no food, super or otherwise, can guarantee cancer prevention. The relationship between diet and cancer is complex and influenced by many factors. While certain foods have been associated with either an increased or decreased risk of cancer, it's the overall pattern of your eating habits that's most important. A study published in JAMA Internal Medicine in 2020 found that a higher diet quality was associated with a lower risk of developing cancer but this wasn't tied to any single food. Rather, it was linked to a diverse diet filled with fruits, vegetables, lean proteins, and whole grains. Moreover, the World Cancer Research Fund suggests that it's not just what you eat, but also how much you eat. Overeating and obesity have been linked to various types of cancer, including breast, colon, and pancreatic cancers. So, what's the recipe for a cancer-preventive diet? First of all, variety is key. Incorporate a range of fruits, vegetables, lean proteins, and whole grains into your diet. The more varied your diet, the more different nutrients you'll get. Next, maintaining a healthy weight is important. Keep an eye on portion sizes and try to maintain a balanced energy intake and output. And third, limit processed foods. 
Highly processed foods often contain more calories and fewer nutrients. Opt for fresh foods whenever possible. And so, we arrive at the end of our myth-busting journey. Much like a culinary journey, we've sampled a smorgasbord of cancer myths and sifted them through the sieve of scientific evidence. Our takeaway? When it comes to cancer, knowledge is indeed power. Just as you'd toss a burnt garlic or a spoiled tomato into the trash, let's throw these cancer myths out of our minds and our conversations. Because let's face it, there's no place for them in the recipe for a healthy life. Let's instead arm ourselves with the right information, as sharp and handy as a chef's knife. Understanding that cancer isn't always a death sentence, knowing it's not contagious. Recognizing that non-smokers can also get lung cancer, accepting that a clear family history doesn't guarantee immunity, and acknowledging that superfoods aren't a magic cancer shield. These are the ingredients for a more informed perspective on cancer. And just as you'd use the freshest ingredients and the right techniques to cook a gourmet meal, let's use regular screenings, a healthy lifestyle, and vigilance to cook up a healthier life. After all, prevention and early detection are the secret spices in the recipe against cancer. So, as we wrap up this video, let's remember, stay informed, stay vigilant, and keep cooking up a healthy, tasty life. And most importantly, never stop learning, because when it comes to health, the learning never ends.